as we continue to dig through Ezekiel and see this prophecy that is really unfolding before our eyes, and God put it heavy on my heart, this is what you talk about, Mark, until we're finished with this prophecy. And, and that's what we're doing. And as we see in the last discussion was Israel is brought up for the first time, Israel, and right then we see Israel is at war. And so we're just going to pick it up there and we're going to talk about where is exact, like where is safe? Because Jerusalem is not safe. There is no prophecy anywhere in the Bible that talks about the safe, secure Jerusalem. It's only lamentations, mournings, and woes, and suffering. Christ's own words in Matthew 24 said, when you see the desolation of abomination of desolation take place as spoken of by Daniel, that you flee from Judea into the mountains. Don't even get your clothes. And if there's nursing babies at that time, you're bumming. If you better pray it's not winter, you better pray it's not the Sabbath, and there will never be another tribulation on the earth before that or ever will be is what the Word of God says. So, but yet Jerusalem is here at Christ's return. So that's kind of where we're going to talk through this prophecy in this moment. So we're just going to pick it up there. Ezekiel 3, starting verse 1. Moreover, he said to me, son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with the scroll that I give you. So I ate it. And it was in my mouth like honey and sweetness. And he said to me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them, for you are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language whose words you cannot understand. Surely, had I sent you to them, they would have listened to you. But the house of Israel will not listen to you, because they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Now, uh, there's many meanings in this, uh, but we're going to talk about Israel this particular episode because what we will see is that there's only so many places on this planet that we know will be here when Christ returns. A third of mankind is killed. A third of mankind is killed again. Babylon, which I strongly believe through the word of God and its great descriptions, is America, and that third of the earth will be destroyed. Um, it's not a city. It's a nation that will be destroyed. And when that is destroyed, and when other, then there's wars going on and tribulation, unlike the world has ever seen. The Antichrist has risen, and his world army is clearly dominating Israel at that point. And you have what's taking place, the War of the Saints, most of the Revel book Revelation talks about the War of the Saints, and it's so funny how most people don't even know of the War of the Saints, but those people haven't taken the time to study Revelation. But the War of the Saints is between the Antichrist and the World Army and 144,000 Israelites from the 12 tribes of Israel and a multitude of nations, tribes, and tongues of Gentiles warring successfully, by the way, because God sustains them and gives them great success for three and a half years. So this war means Jerusalem is the front lines. It's the front lines. So where is safe? Well, America is definitely not safe because I believe by the time Christ returns, it won't even be there at all. But what we know for sure is Jerusalem will be there. Um, it'll be the front lines, but it will be there because that's where Christ returns and he reigns from. That's why the armies gather in the hills of Megiddo to meet Christ and war against what comes out of the Euphrates River. And once they see Christ, they meet him in the valley of Jehoshaphat, where he melts them literally is what the word of God says. And so we know that the Valley of Jehoshaphat's there. We know that Jerusalem is there. And we also know that when he sets his feet on the Mount of Olives, that the mountain breaks in two, making a valley for those in Jerusalem to flee through. 
so we know that east of Jerusalem is there. And then through the prophecy of Isaiah, we also know that Jordan, the nation of Jordan, is going to be there. Other than that, that's all we know for sure. So this prophecy that Ezekiel has for Israel is, is a peculiar one because one, again, if we get it, once we get into four and five, well, all of four points towards a clear timeline that he's talking to not only the early, early Israelites, but he's specifically talking to the new Israelites, the, one that be, the ones that became a nation in 1948 because he gives that timeline in the very next chapter. So it's important that we open our eyes to really what's going on with Israel because people are foolish. They think that this is some sort of good news, that Israel is always going to win and they're always going to be triumphant. That is not true. Uh, it's going to be a great time of trouble for Israel. And Jesus says specifically in Matthew 24, when you see the abomination of desolation take place, just flee. That's your only thing. That's all you can do is flee to the mountains. And that is literally all that you can do. Um, unless you're engaging in the War of the Saints, um, which is clearly a designated and anointed thing. Um, that is not something that you just, well, I'll be part of that war. That's something that you are anointed into. And it's the only way to be a part of that is to be willing to lose your head if somebody asks you to denounce Jesus Christ when everybody else is turning in Christians and turning in Israelites and Jews. When everybody else is doing that, if you then say in a court, you know what, I will never denounce Jesus Christ, that is the only way you become a part of that war. Um, if you're if you're willing to do those kinds of things so this prophecy to israel is really for the next chapter going to be much of god telling ezekiel just giving him some instructions but when we hit chapter four you know these things that i'm saying today you'll say well wait a second you know, how do you? chapter four gives a very 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 clear timeline into how all these things play out. And he wouldn't give that timeline if he wasn't speaking to that generation. Any thoughts or insight, definitely put it below.